So here's some of his equipment. Using this little Milwaukee right here to uh, blow the moisture out of the coils, the chemical out of the coils. Look how handy this thing is. Hey everybody, Camper Van Kevin here. How are y'all doing today? Hmm. So my technician Josh, he's back with me today. He came back to uh, service uh, the rooftop air conditioner and uh may or may not be able to talk him into uh checking out my uh my water pump uh but i've of all the years that i've had rvs i've never had a roof ac serviced and i, I googled the lifespan of a rooftop air conditioner and they say they're only good for three to five years now this is a 1998 model but I can tell this air conditioner is, has been replaced. It's got a newer style uh, cover on top. Uh, Josh said he didn't mind being in the video. And maybe we can, we can learn something from him. Uh, what's happening here, uh, the rooftop air conditioner it works. The heat strip works. But if I try to cool this RV below uh, 72 degrees, the unit still runs, but the air coming out of the vents stop. Yeah, man, some, sometimes it gets hot in here and stuff. Are you talking in front of other people now? Yeah, I already know, Josh. All right, all right. Josh thinks we're crazy. What what, what kind of things are you going to look for? Uh, like I said, I've never had one serviced. Can you add refrigerant to the sealed system if, it need, if it's low? No, these are non-serviceable. What we can do is we can check and make sure there's usually a temp probe or a thermistor inside the uh, push inside the coil. Okay. And what that does is it's going to see that that coil is getting too cold and it's going to regulate the, the compressor. It's going to kick it on and off. It's going to cycle it to keep it from doing what it's doing. So if that's bad, uh, we'll just replace that. But we'll also check the coil, the fins, make sure everything's clean and it's not clogged up and it can breathe. Okay. Um, we'll test the, we'll ohm out the, uh, the thermistor and just make sure everything on it's good. I mean, you're calling it a thermistor? Yeah, it's called a thermistor. Um, what what does the thermistor do? It just regulates it. It monitors the temperature basically. So what it does is when it sees that it's getting way too cold to the freezing point, it's going to cycle the compressor on and off. Okay. And allow just the fan to pull air through. So okay, I understand. That, then it's not going to see that it's getting too cold and it's going to freeze over. So we'll check that and. I guess I'll check the coils and everything else. I saw a device that you clamp onto the refrigerant lines and you can crack into the uh, systems to add refrigerant. Have you, you seen those? So you can add service ports. Okay. Um, if, if there's a leak, we'll see it because these systems have oil. Okay. So if there's a leak up there anywhere, we're going to see it because there's going to be oil. So if that's what it comes down to, then we can look into adding service ports. All right, so that that is possible. Yeah, it's definitely. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Josh is a nice guy. Yeah, we were sitting outside, and these babies took they they recognized the van. They recognized his work van, I think. They ran out to meet him, and I had to yell at them to get them to stop. Especially baby May May. She usually you're the hard headed one. But baby May May can be kind of hard headed. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see what this thing looks like in here. Uh, You'll see a, a year model on here. Uh, let's see. I think this is a 13,000 BTU. 13.5. And it's the only air conditioner in here. Well, I got the mini split now. One of my... 
one of my line uh, line covers uh, insulation things popped up. They make a <clears throat> a kit. It looks like you take a a gutter down spout and you cut it in half. Anyway, it mounts. I think about I think about getting one and then come out to here, and then go down and it'll be like white plastic, and it'll cover all that ugly. I've seen it for sale. You can buy it just about anywhere and you know try to make that look better and i still need to uh let's see here well right now i'm using the ladder to vent this side of the door but i need to i'm looking for a vent that i can cut into that door to get ventilation i need it on both doors I think about going back to that place where I got the sign uh, on the roof to cover up that skylight. They had a bunch of uh, metal in there and mechanical equipment that had louvered vents and stuff on it. So I'm going to go in there and see if I can find something that uh, I can recycle and reuse that looks good. I don't want to have too big an opening to where someone can kick it in and get in uh, so I want it to be kind of narrow where a person can't get through it easy but uh, it's still big enough to let the air in I've been on eBay looking at uh, HVAC um, intake covers but they seem kind of flimsy to me so I'm gonna look at some industrial equipment and they've got a bunch of industrial equipment that they've recycled in there so, you know, I want it to look nice, but it's got to work. It rained last night, so I took the cover off of my uh, zero-gravity chair and threw it in here. It's always a mess. It's always a mess somewhere, something to clean up. Isn't this nice? Boom. Josh said uh, he needed to get on the roof. He's going to put some coil cleaner on the vents up there, the fins up there. So he gets water hooked up for him. Got a ladder set up for him. I had some people write me. So that was a great price they did uh, on your mini split install, but I can't believe how you hovered over the guy the entire time. Boy, that made me hot. I've been a contractor for Right at 30 years, I had a heavy residential market. I think I know how to act around a contractor when he's working on my house. I don't hover over nobody. He said he's more than happy to be on video. Why am I videoing this? Because maybe we can both learn something. Well, I can learn something, I can share it with you. But I'm not hovering over anybody. Okay, Josh is up there. He's going to take the... Uh, the cover off the uh, the rooftop air conditioner. Any idea how old that air conditioner is? Do you see any? Have you seen any dates yet? Not yet. I can tell it's been replaced because that's a more modern cover than they had in '98. Wasp nest. At least, at least nobody's home. Yeah. More. We have. Uh, do you have mud daubers here? Dirt daubers. I've never even heard of that. Never even heard of them. Uh -uh. They're wasps that uh, get in any crack or crevice or hose or opening, and they lay their eggs and they pack it in with. Uh, like dead spiders and stuff and mud. And they stop up uh, all kind of vents for your water heater and furnace. They're hey, horrible. You know what? I have seen this. They're horrible. Yeah, we do have this here. Okay, he just asked for me to turn it on. Let's see here.
put it at 70 degrees. Ought to cut on. Okay, ran it for a while. He asked me to cut the power off to it. I cut it off at the thermostat, but uh, decided probably better to cut it off at the breaker. Let's cut everything off. Okay. Morning, Foxy lady. What are you doing? Your daddy let you out to potty. Oh, he let you out to potty. You sweet baby. Ooh, independent prissy thing. Morning, Felix. Morning, morning. I mean, good afternoon. Still morning. Oh, still morning. Okay. Yeah. Man, Felix, I thought you were dead. No, baby. He just he just he just slept in. Really? Yeah. You getting your beauty rest? Beauty rest. Wanted to congratulate you. It's real obvious now. You're losing weight. Well. Yeah, yeah. I can tell the difference. Can't pinpoint exactly what it is. But it's like overall. Oh, okay. Yep. You seem a little smaller. Oh, I seem a little smaller. Yep. You like me, you ain't got your glasses on yet. I spent 30 minutes looking for my glasses this morning. I knocked them off the edge of the bed and they fell into one of my shoes. I think I'd ever find my glasses. Oh, uh, it's, hap it's happened. You can't see, yeah. you can't find nothing. So I believe, Joshua believes he may have found what's causing the problem. What did you find? So this temp sensor right here? A temp sensor? Yeah, the plug-in was just dangling and this should be soldered into the board huh you so keep those on nothing. you keep those on the truck no we would have to i would have to run get that in town all right temp sensor you don't see any signs of a refrigerant leak no there's no refrigerant leaks on here at all and coils look pretty good Good deal. No wonder problems half the solution. Oh yeah. Okay, you got the board out. He says, Kevin, there's no need to replace this board. It was that blue one right there under the capacitor. Um, it had it popped loose. He said, that's temperature control. So, so it's got a couple little marks on here, but he says he thinks this will get it. Oh, yeah. Think you got it? Yeah. From the outside, paper tiger. Yep. That's what America has become. The church. This vibration knocked it loose. Or, yeah, or if it ever got worked on at one point, and just didn't do it right. Put it back right. Pretty, pretty fragile. All right, he filled up his sprayer right here. He's been letting it run about 10 minutes, checking to see if uh, the soldering he did, if it worked. And uh, so he's going to go up there and clean the coils now. Martini just had a, a seizure. They last about a minute. She has one that I see about every about every eight weeks you better you better good baby so what's what's going on in here you are you retaping it yeah I just resealed it with silver tape it's that tape's definitely not gonna come off like that one it's, um, all right but in here we just checked all the wiring just made sure everything was clean in here Okay, now he's spraying down the condenser coil. 
going to get the dust and dirt out. Make it as efficient as he can by getting it clean. Now he's got a pump up sprayer. He's got, uh, he's already put the cleaning solution on it. Now he's going to use the sprayer with water to get it out. Taking the blower, blowing the water out of the coils. Now he's putting it all back together, nice and cool. So to get the air conditioner serviced, um, coils cleaned, and him to fix that circuit board, it's, I mean, it's throwing ice cubes out of the ceiling right now. Much colder air than I've ever felt. $271. Uh, talked to the owner of the company, and he said, uh, I said, would you like me to uh, show your name and number or not? Because I know a lot of people in the RV community that need uh, this type of work. A lot of people want to put mini splits on their RVs. Is that something you want to do? He said, sure. So I'm uh, right here close to Edgewood, uh, New Mexico. Their business name, I'll show you the truck here, is Duke City Services. They do electrical, plumbing, heating and cooling, drain cleaning, remodeling, 24-7 emergency response. And here's the telephone number. These guys have treated me right. Technicians, uh, very well trained, very knowledgeable, and uh, doing a good job for me, treating me right. So uh, my water pump has been... Uh, going off about every 10 minutes either I have a leak or the I think that what do they call it the heads losing pressure or whatever so uh, guy here at the campground he had a spare pump and I thought well while they're here I'll let them do it so Josh is in here now getting the old water pump out tight tight fit in there huh a little bit my last Bigfoot, same year model, my friend down at Town and Country Campers in Arnoldsville, Winterville, Georgia, David, he actually cut a hole right here so he could access everything better. Josh may have to do the same thing. But uh, this may or may not fix the problem, but I can't find a leak anywhere. So I'm assuming it's the pump. So he's going to do this for me before he, okay, before he leaves. Okay, didn't have enough room. To work in there and just like my other technician in Winterville, Georgia, he had to cut a hole to reach the pump to replace it. Now he can reach it. I may put a door over this or I may uh, just put some uh, tape and seal that back up. Well, it's a lot later in the afternoon than the last clip that you saw. Um, the pump that the man had here in the park for me to use, it didn't fit. Uh, the fittings and stuff didn't line up, so he had to go get a new pump. Let me show you what he did in here. On well, this Bigfoot, he had to do the same thing that on this one, we had to do on my last one. Got an access hole with a big uh, hole saw. This pump is just a little bit bigger than the one I had. You see this door right here? I want to buy one and put one right there. This should just cover that hole. It's going to be really close. Maybe a little bit of caulking around the edge. And uh, that way, if I ever got to get back in there again to have the pump serviced, I'll just unlock the lock. 
so here's the pump. The guy here at the park said I could use. It was brand new, hadn't been used. I'll give it back to him. Here is my old pump. Uh, let's see here. 2.8 gallons a minute. This pump, uh, he went he went to an RV dealer here and said they told him that this pump was uh, no longer being made. Look at there. It was original to the RV. And since he has uh, put this pump in, it hasn't been um, making any noise. So it wasn't a leak after all. It's just bleed, bleed back into this pump here. This is the one that replaced it. It is uh, three gallons a minute instead of the 2.8. And I got a lot better water pressure. What better? Hope my sink's clean. A lot stronger flow. So that pump was wore out. Even though it was putting water in here, you know that pump was still putting water, pumping water. Big difference. Big difference. So, when that pump makes a noise and all the faucets are off, it may not, be, may not be you have a leak. It may be your water pump. Even though it seems to be working. Martini has not been feeling good. She, uh, she threw up a bunch of grass a while ago and uh, she had a seizure keeping a close eye on the baby. She never lays there. So she'll probably be all right. But I'm just giving her some time to get better. So fixing the rooftop air conditioner, soldering the board, putting it all back together, cleaning all that 271. And uh, the new pump, the new pump was 130-ish. And he charged me $200 to install it. But he had a trip or two to town, which is not very close to here. Not very far, but not close either. So, total of, I think it was $603. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. The only thing more expensive than fixing an RV is letting it go down and trying to fix it all up at once. you got to keep your RV up. And so the pump thing, that's new on me. <laughs> I'm still learning. Nobody knows it all out here, especially me. But I think that's going to end today's video. Probably gone on. Probably got a long video now. That'll be all right. Some are short, some are long. But I'm going to end this one where? Right here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Hey. We'll see you again soon. You guys take care. And as always, I give God the glory for my life. Jesus Christ, he's my savior. All right, see you later. Please check me out on Camper Van Kevin Facebook and Patreon. Bye-bye.